Uh, welcome again in our webinar, the Quarry and Luca Dream Team. Today we will uh, dive into how to turn raw data into actionable business insights with the BigQuery and uh, Looker Dynamic Duo. And today we'll have on stage our experts in Google Cloud Platform and BigQuery and Looker Solution, Max Datsenko, Chief Technology Officer from CloudFresh. Hi, Max. Thank you for joining. And our second speaker is a customer engineer from Google Cloud with rich expertise in Looker Solution, Shar Ferrari, who will share some insights and demo session on Looker. Hi, Shar. Thank you. A uh, few words about CloudFresh. We are global Google Cloud, Zendesk, Asana, GitLab, Microsoft, and Okta partners, trusted by more than 1,400 customers around the world. And we offer professional services for our clients, guiding custom implementation, migration, first-hand experience, training, cost-effective use, and ongoing support. And uh, here you can see some of our customers who work with us and transform their operation within the cloud. And let's go straight away to the offer. Today, we would like to offer you a free consultation on data analytics with our expert. And for those companies spending over 10K per year, you can get a bonus of uh, 1,000 free credits for Google Cloud services, including BigQuery and Looker, by partnering with CloudFresh. And one more thing, today we have also some gifts for the best two questions asked to our speakers. So at the end, at the Q&A session, we will choose two of them. So please don't be shy, ask all your questions to the chat. And I'm passing the microphone to Max. Max, please. Thank you, Anastasia. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And today we'll speak about the uh, analytics infrastructure in the Google Cloud. Uh, and so two of them are BigQuery and Looker, but uh, not to forget about the Gemini, uh, which makes a three of a perfect pair. I think that's a perfect return of the old uh, King Crimson track. Uh, so, uh, we live in the, in the times where we have a lot of information, uh, a lot of data, and uh, that's actually, it's now uh, free to have more data than uh, like 10, 15 years ago was uh, like simply possible. Uh, you may still be in the free tier with uh, this, this amount of data. And so, um, like those 10, 15 years ago, uh, there were only the biggest and richest one who could so have the resources, the computing resources to uh, process the data, uh, even the, in that uh, small quantities. And now uh, we are living in the time where we have those uh, data and resources, uh, but there's a lot of data and uh, actually um, it's hard to uh, understand what the data is and not speaking about uh, taking the insights out of it, it and like the new new words like one last year we are living in the um, era of the uh, ai which um, like fast like mind-blowing fast and uh, this is something that can unlock your uh, insights from the data but there is a problem uh, actually the instruments that which were used uh, like last 10-15 years of this uh, data revolution uh, are not uh, like good for the AI era and uh, we see that uh there are some challenges and uh first of them is that most insights are trapped in, in inside the unstructured data like documents video audio or pdfs or anything else uh, and the numbers are big uh the second thing is real-time intelligence and uh you like don't want to 
uh, wait like for one week for uh, seeing what you have a uh, week ago. Uh, and uh, that's also about the ingesting of the data for analysis and the same for the processing this data. Uh, data, different types of data are gathered in different uh, data sources like different databases or data storages and uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, like types of storages and there are lots of instruments to work with this data. Uh, that uh, gives us uh, a lot of complexity and a lot of costs, it's expensive. Uh, and since the data is your uh, like most valuable asset, uh, as we like all know, uh, you definitely don't want to uh, this data to leak. Uh, so that's another uh, challenge. Uh, it's hard to uh, manage the data governance with uh, those dozens of the instruments and data storages. And last but not least, uh, times changing, instruments changing, and uh, you have to have people to be aware of those instruments and probably you want them not to be just aware, but uh, really can uh, extract some value from those data uh, those datas so uh, that's another point and here comes the uh, bigquery which is uh, like the most modern and most universal instrument on the market it's like from the technical perspective it's uh, natively uh, serverless so you don't have to like spin up the servers to maintain like clusters uh, and uh, this is so serverless that it does have not only uh, compute decoupled from the storage but even compute decoupled from the memory uh, so it's uh, First, it's modern, it's unified, and it's very granularly scaling. It's actually uh, can uh, load as many uh, units, uh, like slots, uh, for uh, for uh, processing of your data as needed. And uh, like in case of Carefor. Uh, you may you may imagine how uh, which resources Carefor can afford, but the uh, uh, same query query on the same data which was processed on the uh, in the Carefor for eight hours on uh, BigQuery processed only in four minutes, like that's huge. Uh, and um, like. We, we we look usually we, uh, everyone uh, takes uh, BigQuery as a data warehouse. Uh, it is actually, but what is uh, data warehouse in general in in the like outside of Google world? It's like the standard database, standard SQL database working in uh, all up uh, mode. So it works with a structured data with SQL, uh, and that's it. Uh, and so, like for the unstructured data, you use the uh, data lakes and all the uh, big data instruments. And BigQuery is so much bigger than that. Uh, it can work with uh, structured data, semi-structured data, unstructured data with all the types like pictures, videos, audios, uh, documents and everything. Uh, it can work with the static data, with the batch loaded data, with the streaming data. Uh, it can work with all the storages uh, like you used to use, uh, like for, for sure Google storage, it's native storage, but also the uh, S3 or Azure storage like in other clouds. It understands all the types of data you can imagine, uh, including Iceberg, Hoodie, Delta Cloud, and others. Um, 
it works also if you are like for a long time in your data in the, in the data story for the long time uh, and use uh, different uh, Hadoop instruments or uh, all other si uh, types of instruments. It is massively integrated with uh, uh, all things you actually know, so you can work with it. And uh, uh, BigQuery Omni uh, allows you to work with uh, like globally with the different regions, for sure with the different regions uh, in Google Cloud, but also in the uh, AWS or Azure, you can spin up the uh, BigQuery and still uh, manage and work with it from the single, single pane of glass from the single console. So uh, with uh, like all the things like bidirectional data federation, cross cloud transformations, cross cloud materialized views, and uh, all other stuff from the single console. And Gemini, uh, gener uh, generative AI. Uh, Gemini is the uh, like fastest and uh, natively multimodal and uh, massively uh, multi-purpose uh, and uh, like most affordable actually uh, model on, the, on this uh, planet at the moment uh, so it is uh, natively integrated with a bigquery uh, with a bigquery ml uh, which works with a uh, machine learning and vector embeddings and reg uh on the native level uh so some things are on in the, with the general availability uh general generally available at the moment but uh more to come uh actually the all the stuff uh which i'm speaking about is working like with a simple uh sql language so uh, you are, if you are not uh, like data scientist uh, and you don't know the Python uh, or R, uh, you are still uh, may work with the, all your data or the, at the full speed with the just simple SQL. And what's ahead, uh, you have the, a lot of features which are uh, already in preview. That means you may use them, uh, but they are like in beta. Uh, and in the short term uh, roadmap, so more to come. So summarizing, uh, you have warehouses where like may I answer you what has happened uh, before works with the structure work with the structured structured data with the SQL with a siloed uh, data governance and data security. Uh, you have data lakes, which are complex, uh, needs very, very special people, works, still works with unstructured data and allows the predictions, uh, working with programming languages. And you have the BigQuery, which uh, combines all of that, uh, unifies the data governance, unifies the uh, security, works with any type of data sitting anywhere, uh and uh, works with a structure uh, with a sql or natural language with uh genii and with a program and different programming languages and still it is the uh like most affordable solution uh on the planet at the moment uh and uh, actually when you are uh, like using the bigquery you are not paying for the servers, some reserved resor resources, storage, anything. Like you pay for the storage for sure, uh, but uh, you uh, pay only for the bytes which were processed during a query. So if you have like multi hundred terabytes or petabyte scale uh, data sets, if you are uh, querying just uh, like some uh, columns, you may still be very, very cost effective.
like the the, the worst worst thing you may uh, do with a BigQuery is select uh, star. So we centralize the data, uh, and then uh, we have uh, another problem: uh, the analytics silos. Uh, and uh, where the problem sits is that instruments which you probably use or may have used uh, during the last years uh, give you or the bottleneck with a data analyst uh, and you may wait for weeks uh, days or even weeks uh, for the for your queue in the uh, to data analyst or the data chaos if you are like given it uh, give it out to the uh, uh, users directly and looker uh, may uh, allow you to centralize the soul and democratize the uh, uh, data insights uh, i will not be uh, like will not do the long presentation here because charles is waiting and he has uh, like uh, will give a lot, lot much fun uh, than myself, but still a couple of slides. Uh, it's unified in architecture. It works with a, it has the semantic model modeling layer, which allows you to prepare and model and ETA even ETL the data uh, just inside the uh, looker. Uh, it is API first so you may uh interact with anything and it's multi-cloud it can work with a uh, data setting on other clouds and the whole picture looks like this uh so it can like uh literally sit on any sql speaking data source uh including the databases or uh data warehouses on other clouds uh and uh it then looker complements the uh, whole data structure data processing structure and gives you uh the possibilities to uh like have the insight from the data at a new level and lightning speed and then uh charles stage is all yours Thank you, Maxim. I uh, just wonder if you want to go maybe over the questions before or we go all together after. There were a couple of very good questions on the chat. Well, uh, yes, we can also a couple. Yeah, let's answer some of them uh, about big topic. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, I see some questions about big and Looker from both, and so we will uh, skip them for now and. Um, that will be answered at the end. Also, there are some questions about Gemini. A question from Vitaly, is it possible to allow Gemini to work with specific data tables and restrict Gemini access to the rest data tables? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so I can, I can answer that. Uh, so yeah, it's totally possible to control what Gemini has access uh, or if Gemini has access uh, in total to your database. I will show you also how it works uh, with Looker. It's a bit uh, you can you can put Gemini on top of Looker, and then you can even control it with based on the access that Looker already has. But as usual, as like everything in Google Cloud, you have very fine grained uh, access control, uh, so you can separate things in different data sets in different tables and control which service has access to which table. It's mainly done with uh, with data connectors. So the data connectors have controlled access to control tables. I saw a lot of questions uh, regarding uh, security. And, and so I saw one about the, the Google data centers. That's a public information. So you can, you can search and you will find the list of all the Google services, uh, all, all the Google servers, and you always choose where you, which server you are using. Uh, and uh, well, you, that that's a public information. I don't know the distance between those and the Amazon servers, to be honest. Uh, and then 
regarding data query uh, prediction. Prediction is a mathematical formula, is a mathematical calculation that the AI will do for you. So there are several several uh, models. None of those models, well, some were created by Google, but most of them are open source. So that's why uh, everyone has access to it. So if if you think that that's the way to predict uh, to predict cryptocurrency rate or or market rates, you're free to to give it a try. Uh, and I think that other question was about Looker as well, but I see Katarzyna's question about BigQuery. So let's answer to her question. She wrote that she understands correctly, if she understands correctly, uh, that with Gemini in BigQuery, there would be no need to know outstandingly SQL, Python, and other. And what will be the SQL code assist? Yeah, that links well also with another question, which was like, what kind of roles you need in order to to work uh, in BigQuery and in Looker, uh, which are very good questions. So, well, uh, that that's a very valid question. So it really depends on what you're going to do. Basically, well, I will show you how Looker works. Basically, for Looker, you need a more basic knowledge. But of course, we know that SQL is like such a legacy and powerful language, so you can use it in many ways. You can go very advanced if you want. To get started, you don't need anything advanced to make a selection, to make some play, some playing around. But if you want to, if your data is growing a lot, let's say if you are kings and then you are having all the Candy Crush data into your BigQuery, then you probably would like to have more advanced people with more advanced knowledge. To get started, there are lots of resources online. There is the Google Cloud Academy that you can you can leverage your basic SQL knowledge uh, even further, and you can do a lot by yourself. So, okay, I count on you, Anastasia, for the questions because I didn't keep track. Uh, we can move yeah. on, maybe. Sure, sure. The stage is yours, and we'll cover the questions about Looker after your slides Ooh. because you'll you'll tell more about this solution. Yes, let me share my screen. I'll take over if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Sweet. So, is it working? Yes. So yes. okay. Uh, so I'm Charles. I'm a customer engineer in Google Cloud. This picture <laughs> was a bit younger, time to update my, my LinkedIn picture. Uh, so, well, uh, I work also with uh, with Looker most of the time. Uh, and of course, BigQuery comes with it because we are integrating a lot with BigQuery, but also with other, all the SQL databases. Uh, what I will do today, I'll show you a bit the life on a day of Silosum, which is like this character that has very siloed data. Uh, I will show you a bit of of the uh, a bit of the a bit of the tool itself, and then we can finally jump back to the FAQ, and Anastasia can help me uh, with the questions. So first, I just wanted to know uh, who in the audience already knows Looker. There is this resource of uh raising raising your hand like for question i believe so if you could raise your hand if you already know looker just so i know okay we have quite a few and how many how many of you guys are on technical roles how many of you like are like cto or analysts um, a few people and how many of you are are business users like that uh, you're like ceo cto or okay some people that now use tableau yeah i see the question just as briefly but i will go over that, those sweet so the first thing i want to bring back is a bit of what maxim was 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 telling us uh about the about the data centralization so we have all these people, so maybe the technical folks in the call, they will relate with Silosam. So Silosam is usually the people, the person that you go to ask for data. This person knows where the data is, knows how to write SQL queries, and know how, knows how to, to bring data to their users. 
So Silosum, it is he is the siloed part of 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 the of the data journey. Anytime you want to launch a new feature in the product, anytime you want to know how if a marketing campaign is working or not, all the time you need this kind of information. You need to go to silo some. Sometimes he works alone. Sometimes he works in a team. But that's very typical that this person is overstressed, and so is the team. Uh, and this this is uh, pretty much to do with what Maxim was showing until now, which is this typical situation where you have one person who has who holds the technical knowledge, the other people hold the business knowledge, and they depend way too much into each other. So that's what, uh, so yeah, the dependency of Solosum slows down uh, people's work, and so is uh, Solosum. He's not happy. It is a very, it is a very frustrating uh, part of the job, especially because probably Solosum is only writing SQL queries when he would be, when he would like to produce a valid, a valid work, when he would like to actually make the business work. So that's when that's when Looker comes into the picture, and that's where Silosum hopefully uh, meets Looker. So the whole point of Looker, uh, I know we are talking about uh, BigQuery a lot, and BigQuery is a very uh, is a is a, is a brother of Looker, let's say, which is which works pretty well. But Looker, in fact, works with any SQL database. Uh, the power of BigQuery leveraging there is, of course, you can choose the region, you can create as many data sets, query among them, control on a very fine grain the security, and then you can also then leverage that with Looker. But the main point is that we will have an interface that separates the, the business user needs, where the business user can query the data by themselves, and the knowledge of how the data works and so on. Uh, I Maxim told me that there are some pieces, and I saw people talking a lot about Gemini. No wonder uh, uh, Google is putting a lot of effort. Before we talk about Gemini, I just want to show three ways that Looker can not only not only provide your company insights, but if you have interest, of course, the the, the Cloud Fresh team is happy to help you with this. You can also make Looker part of your product. So we have lots of customers that, for instance, not only get insights for them, but they use Looker as a base to create insights for their customers. SaaS companies, for instance, let's say that like uh, the, the, the oh, well, Candy Crush is not an example. Candy Crush is an example of Looker user that they use to know how much, uh, how, how much, uh, how much people are swiping right and left and visualize how people are interacting with the game but let's say that we have like a, a, a company that sells tickets and then you would like to offer an interface to to the flight company or to the travel agencies you can then create an embedded analytics where you will charge your customers more to show your data or something like that and you can use it either as embedded or you can use it uh, as an api uh, and we can, you can also have a totally white labeled version of Looker. So everything that I will show you today, all the resources, everything that you will see, you can also sell it to your customers. Of course, then you will use Looker to control the, all the, all the, the, the security access, all the authentication and authorization and so on. Okay. And finally, Gemini. So where where does Gemini comes into 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 the picture? Uh, when we are talking about Looker, there is one thing that is very interesting about Looker with Gemini, which is that Gemini empower that Looker empowers Gemini as well. So I know I saw the questions about, for instance, using uh, using uh, Gemini for like cold writing. We have the same with like this. Uh, Copilot, which is like the tool from from the competition, which is a very fairly good tool. So now you can also use that like to write your LookML models. You can of course use for SQL and so on. But more than that, you can use Looker as an interface for your Gemini. Why? Because then you can have uh, like this written analytics where you would ask Gemini for information. So you would ask Gemini something like, 
hey, uh, how many sales did I have yesterday? And instead of Gemini looking into your table, instead, instead of Gemini looking into some unstructured or hard to understand data, it will ask Looker. And Looker, since Looker offers this business information strictly and well-defined, it will give a totally unbiased data. So you don't want, there are some information, especially like the company information, your sales information, uh, and all the all this uh, sort of like more critical data. You don't want the LLM to guess it for you. So you can use Looker instead uh, as a middle layer to provide this kind of answer. And that's where uh, that's where we we advocate most on Gemini. Of course, there are all these nice resources, but there is also this power of providing the source of truth for your Gemini implementation. Enough blah blah blah. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't like the, the the little speech part. I would be happy to show you how Looker looks like. So. Uh, we have 10 minutes for that, we'll do it. Uh, so let me show you how Looker looks like on a daily life. So how how would be your, your, your logging in, you just woke up and you want to see how your business is doing. So when you log into Looker, well, this is, uh, this is our login. Again, this could be your own login. I will be, I will be entering my Looker interface here. And this is where I will land on. So I will basically see my dashboard. So I could, this could be like my business dashboard, my marketing dashboard, and so on. And wherever I'm up to. So if I am, I am the CEO, I just want to, so, to know how the business is doing. I'll simply come here and click into the business polls. In this case, the business polls is just a set of metrics. So far, a BI tool. As boring as a BI tool can be. You only have metrics here, but we have much more added to it. So there are some important information that uh, that Looker brings here. I saw that some of you are users of, of Tableau and Power BI. So what Looker brings different than, than most of the other tools is that first of all, this is not a data that is aggregated somewhere and then Looker is bringing this data for you. This All this data that you see here, is coming straight from your database. So if I come here and then I'm like, hey, I don't want to see from the last 30 days. I want to see from the last night, uh, from the last 90 days. I want to see from the last 30. What Looker will do is that it will, well, once I click update, Looker will change the way it, that it views this data and will update all these queries. Who calculated 1.6% uh, repeat pur purchase rate here? was my backend. So it was my, it was the big query. It was not a data that was on the table and Looker calculated it. Looker created the query and then the database answered. That can give you a much more fine granular, granular access to data. And that allows you to slice and dice a lot of your data. Now there are some very cool resources. All these resources, if you are using Looker, as part of your product, you can choose if you give access to the user or not, as well as you can give access to one user and then say, hey, other user, if you want to have access to this, you need to purchase our premium plan. You, you are free to decide whatever you give access to your end users or not. And one of these resources, one that we see customers really like is this uh, alert feature. So let's say that you have some number that whenever in this case here is a marketing campaign okay so what is a common use case on a marketing co campaign whenever that marketing campaign goes uh, conversion rate goes below two percent i want to be alerted about that so i can take some action i can stop that campaign and so on another thing that you can do is you can simply schedule the delivery to to your uh to your email for instance, of this dashboard, if you have investors, you can just schedule the delivery every beginning of month to them so they can take a look, or maybe you don't want, it's up to you. This offers several formats, you can send it through email, and one way that we see, uh, I don't have it here, but uh, there is also the same destination, is uh, is just a click and install from Slack. So it's one way, for instance, if you're starting your data-driven journey in your company, you're like, hey, I want to start making people more aware of the data, more aware of the sales, 
this is of, this could be a nice first step. So you come here and you simply say, create, send it to Slack every morning, a PNG image with the sales from last week. That's one way that you can start making your company more data driven, or you can of course send it over to a team, whatever is important to you. Another feature here that is particularly nice is that you can have access to the role level detail. Remember, this is not being aggregated anywhere. So if I have this, hey, I had 10 purchases yesterday and you're like, hey, I want to see which ones were these 10 purchases. In this case here, I selected 46,000. Uh, so it brought me 500, <laughs> which should be enough. So I can see what is this number bringing? Where is this number coming coming from? And in this case, I'm like, hey, this is my marketing spend. This is uh, or, or my customer spend. I want to know more about this customer. I want to know which sort of information uh, like specific to this customer do I have? You can simply create a dashboard specific to that customer. So you can literally navigate through your data back and forth. Another thing that you can do from there, let me go back. Another thing that you can do from here, you can, for instance, send an email to that customer, start an ad, uh, like uh, a, a targeted ads campaign, link it to your internal system. You're free to, you, you, you are the artist here. Everything that you can do with a webhook, you can link it here. This would be purely viewer user of Looker, but we have a second layer of it, which is the explore layer. So let me dive into the explore layer, which is the layer that you will use to create the visuals and to and to and you can also by the way this layer you can also give access to your end users if you are making this as part of your product um one cool feature is that as you saw i could jump in and see how that metric was builded on the semantic layer but i can also simply come here clean everything and start one from scratch what is the important piece on this side here is that you have your your metrics on the right this is uh these are on my database uh these are each of these are one table on my database and i have already defined on the semantic layer how this works so what i can do here is let uh, i want to see for instance hey how many items were sold last month i just need to select for instance account and then select the dimension that i'm counting on so let's say oh, let's take sales per month once I click run, Looker will perform an SQL query to my database and will bring me already a nice visualization that will tell me how much, how many sales happened uh, on each month. Starting from January 2021, I'm like, hey, you know what? I don't want, I don't want uh, to go that far. I want to filter it. So I want to see only the last 12 complete months. I know SQL for at least 15 years. If I need to search for the purchases I had on the last 12 complete months, I need to go to Google and, and look for, or whatever, ask ChatGPT, hey, how can I query 12 months, uh, 12 complete months? Now, who's doing it? Your business user. It's not even you. And Looker is empowering your business user to write a query for you. Once they go here, they click Run, the query will be rerun and will bring you the result here. The query is here. If you want to see, you can see it. You can also hide it from the users if you want. So you see, for instance, here I have a month name. All this formula is already there out of the box. And you can play around with your data as much as you want. Uh, another important piece here is that since it knows how the queries connect, let's say that now I want to know from each market, uh, from each marketing campaign I had, from each source, I want to know how much those, those that money brought me. So I can simply come here and I can bring from a total different table. I can bring, let me see, traffic source. So I can create a pivoting table here. And now I have a very complicated question that I will need to sit for at least 15 minutes to write a query. I have the answer here without knowing, not even, I could even like call my dog SQL and not know what it means. And now I know that, for instance, in December, I had a huge uh, like sales that came from, from, or from, uh, 
for, from what is the organic? Is that organic? No, from search. And then I have this in organic and so on. So you can make these very complicated calculations on a self-service interface. The good side here is that I used count, but I could have used a more complicated KPI, like traffic, uh, like uh, gross margin, for instance, churn, all those KPIs that are important for, for a business. You define all of those in the semantic layer, and then you can reuse them. I'm over time. Um, I will I will stop there and then go for the questions. I hope I could show you a sneak peek, but I'm pretty sure that that our teammates from Cloudfresh could uh, go deeper if if you guys have interest on knowing more. Thanks, and Charles. Let me share the screen. We'll make a quick conclusion and we'll get straight to our questions. So, Max, please. By the way, I'm using a Chromebook. Yes, <laughs> that was a funny question. <laughs> Can see. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, as uh, Charles mentioned, uh, if you have uh, like a desire, uh, a dream, or uh, need to uh, go for uh, most advanced uh, analytics infrastructure in the world, uh, you may come to us, uh, and we will help you to set up BigQuery to optimize BigQuery uh, because it is actually can be optimized uh, and we see it with every uh, our customer uh, to set up the analytics with looker uh, and uh, so on so uh, anything starting from ingesting the data from your uh, data sources to uh, creating of the dashboards like uh, come to us and uh, summarizing all the uh, all the webinar, so what you can do with uh, those two instruments and like some of their uh, behind, uh, you may unify your uh, data landscape. Uh, you may unlock insights at the new level, and as I told, at hyperspeed, because uh, the BigQuery is lightning fast. Nothing uh, in this world, uh, in this field, or in the field of data lakes or, or data warehouses, is as fast as uh, BigQuery. Uh, effortless data ingestion. It is uh, both of the instruments are uh, massively integrated with all possible um, data uh, data sources. Uh, democratized data exploration, I guess, uh, Charles, uh, like very, uh, uh, like detailing, detailed, uh, like did the, uh, ex like very speaking, uh, self speaking example on this, and still, uh, security, uh, as you centralize the data, you centralize the security and you centralize the uh, um, uh, data governance and i saw this the uh, the question in the chat box uh, or like or can we allow uh, the access to some tables and uh, not allow to some tables if you if you are uh, storing the data in the uh, bigquery itself you can make it on the column level so not only table, but uh, you may give access to certain columns and hide uh, from the user all others. And it's cost effective. It's very granular and uh, it is the model of use in BigQuery in pay as you go. Uh, if you are uh, like uh, proficient in making the uh, data requests uh, like queries, uh you may be very very cost effective so uh that's all uh speaking about the um uh, matter uh still i want to remind that uh you may scan this qr code uh fill the simple form uh 
set the free consult uh, consultation with uh, us and uh, if you are spending uh, at least ten thousand uh, dollars per year which is not much uh, you we may cover uh, ten percent of it uh, in credits for uh, for you to start well, the BigQuery and uh, your looker path in uh, Google Cloud. So uh, that's uh, a time of questions and answers. Yeah, thanks, Max. Like, let's come back to some questions we've been asked earlier. So I see the question from Mars. Could you compare the performance and features of Looker to those uh, of other tools, such as Power BI and Tableau? Yeah, I think we went a bit uh, over the differences. Um, I know that it's funny because I, I look both Looker and uh, like all the tools actually, Tableau and Power BI always come with new features. Uh, our main difference, I would say, is the semantic layer. So performance wise, Looker will be as performant as your database. So if you use BigQuery, it will be very performant, but it can be as performant as, as your database. And I would say that in general, we have different use cases. So like Looker is much more focused on scalability, like really grow when you have this growing demand that you need to offer like several measures, several ways of offering the data and you want people to query data by themselves. Well, Tableau and, and, and Power BI, they are more uh, on the piece of, of BI uh, itself. But there are, it really goes a lot on your use case. Um, there are many cases where I would low key say, hey, maybe Power BI or Tableau are better for you. Uh, but all in all, I think that Looker goes on the on more on the sense of like really uh, scalability. So it's a kind of different use case. Thank you, thank you a lot. So I see uh, uh, the other question from. I only see the initials, unfortunately, so I cannot name the person correctly. A S H. So if you can, please write your full name to the chat so we can name you. And the question is, if I have business data which processed and I use your AI, my data processed only for my company or it's shared and AI learns from my data. And for now, uh, they're using Tableau. So again, I repeat the question I was writing on I'm sorry. Sure, sure. If the data is processed uh, with uh, uh, Gemini AI and Google Cloud AI, other tools, this data, only is processed for the company or it's shared and this AI learns based on this AI? Oh, no, 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 yeah, very good question. Yeah, thank you. That's actually a huge, a huge uh, advocation of Google in general is that you will take control of what the, uh, like you, you have the model and you apply the model, okay? So you will not be using uh, Looker, or Looker, sorry, Gemini will not be using the learnings to anything else. Of course, if you are using Gemini the same way that if you are using ChatGPT or other tooling, like making questions, it will be using it for its own learning. But once you are using a model, the model stays in your in your uh, project. Uh, you can use shared data if it is public. <laughs> If it's not public, then, but yeah, if it's shared, you can. Uh, it really depends on the use case on what you are looking for. Thank you, thank you, Cheryl. We have another question from Alexi that is, is answered in the chat, but uh, let's bring it out. Is it possible to embed Looker widgets inside other web-based products and access via CCO? Yeah, so you you can choose the SSO you want. So. The embed piece itself, uh, you do you you already have your SSO, so we assume that your customer is already logged into your portal. Everything you need to do is to build a very tiny backend that would connect with Looker and get back the embedded URL, and then you embed that URL. So you can use your SSO normally, and if you are going to a white labeled version of Looker. You can, uh, you, I, I believe you can create your own SSO if you would like, but you can also use like LDAP and other uh, SSO uh, that providers that are already there. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. I hope you, uh, we answered the question. 
and uh, there is other uh, the difference between processing data from a local server and cloud a uh, difference between other cloud database for data processing uh, for bigquery or for would it uh, it's not written here so we can ask um, a big person. Query. yeah oh. bigquery uh, the the main point of bigquery is that is like maxim was showing us uh it is a very uh serverless approach to your data so that's our main differentiator with other tools so if you store there is a tiny storage fee and then you will pay only for the queries that you make over that data so it's really like if you're not using it and even i think there is even like if you store up to 100 gigabytes or up to a certain amount it's free even i don't remember that by heart by out of from the top of my head at the moment but there is a very price calculation for download uh you don't have any uh, any extra price i think but one thing i tell you if you if you search on, on google uh, google cloud price calculator it will be redirected to a calculator uh, page just be aware that it, once you click in bigquery it will show you the provisioned data uh provision bigquery which is the most expensive tier of bigquery but then if you change to on demand which is this one that we are explaining which is the the, the the one that you pay only for what you use then you will be able to put there hey if i process 10 terabytes of data and i store one terabyte how much would that cost so you can do these calculations there uh just be careful not to use the tiered one the tiered one is if you have really a lot of data to process, then you can reserve uh, that you can reserve the the processing uh, on BigQuery, then it will be always uh, there and that's cheaper for like big corporations. So then just be careful with this. Uh, but you can you can calculate basically everything. And there was one question there that I was starting answering now that we're talking about pricing with Looker. Uh, so I would recommend if you if you are interested to really reach out to, to the to the cloud fresh team and check it with them but looker has two prices so one is you pay for the you pay for a basic uh like for for the instance itself and then you pay per user you don't pay per amount of queries uh, or anything like that you pay per user after the basic or, or like the instance price but there is a lot <laughs> to, to be discussed on that pricing and so on. So I would highly recommend that if you are interested on it first, uh, reach out to the team and then take it from there. Thank you. Uh, I saw that you answered already in the chat uh, several questions about the data source for your demo, about the, uh, you also shared the link where people Good can uh, explore Looker on their own. Uh, I see the question from Katarzyna. It's an interesting question about um, uh, information we didn't share today and would it be on our next webinar. So uh, here I have a, a, a feedback form for you. Uh, sure, we will sync and we will note all the comments. Katarzyna, thank you. And you can also, you are welcome to share your feedback and the topics for the future webinars that you would like us to cover. So please, please, uh, uh, there is only four questions, not all of them are required uh, and uh, we will be, we'll appreciate it very much. And let's go to the other questions. The question from Vitaly, what benefits Luca has uh, when using with Google BigQuery versus other database engines? Luca by itself will not care about what you have underneath. Uh, the, advantage, the advantages are on the on the bigquery so like you will have the advantages of the bigquery pricing and the ability to create all those clustering uh, like all those performance features of bigquery but if you if looker if looker connects to bigquery or if looker connects to power bi uh, it doesn't really change uh, anything uh the maybe if you're really talking about the high demand maybe network traffic could be uh, sometimes challenging when you when you when you need to pay for external but still there i don't think that 
uh, you will have any major difference. Looker is just like, okay, I will query that guy instead of this guy. Fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Another question When Google planning to build a data center in Ukraine, what uh, shared data we can use in AI? Yeah, that's. Uh... That goes really beyond my <laughs> my customer engineer role. I know that they usually publish uh, when they deploy. I, I I don't know if there is a data center there, but valid question. Uh, if you go to if you go to Google Cloud, uh, if Google Google Cloud uh, server locations, you can also see which features are available on on each region where Google Cloud is available. So like there are some. Gen AI features that are not uh, available uh, worldwide. So you can also take a look into that before uh, storing your data. Maybe you want to consider uh, to consider that. Of course, for security and GDPR reasons, uh, you have Vertex and all Gemini uh, features available on, with Europe, like that. Your data doesn't need to to leave uh, to leave the, the the zone of the European Union. Thank you. Thank you. I see uh, one more question from Bogdan. What key metrics should be tracked to evaluate the success of working with BigQuery and Looker as a business value? Uh, <laughs> that's a, uh, typically, you go on the... That's a good question. Typically, you go... People go mostly on the total acquisition cost, on the total maintenance cost since uh you you need to calculate how much the ownership of this tooling will be and also the maintenance like how much you are paying for people to to keep that up and running that will be one metric that i would keep track but when we are talking about startups sometimes startups have a lot of money they just want to be quick uh, sometimes the startups don't have money and then they're just like, I just want to have less people working, then that should probably uh, be the, the KPI. It really goes a lot uh, on, on you. Uh, thank you, Charles. Thank you. Uh, so um, as far as we are running out of the time and we need to choose Two best question from a best era of them, but let's try to do it. So please, Max, Charles, what question you found the most interesting? I guess my Oscar goes to ACH uh, with all his questions. <laughs> ACH, uh, okay. So uh, I'd like to ask you, please share your name so we can find you and we can send to you the email uh, about all the information we needed to send to you the gifts. Uh, so please, please share your full name here or write uh, to highcloudfresh.com and we'll send you the gifts shortly. And Charles, what do you think? Oh my God, I didn't know I had this task, uh, but, um, oh my God, just. Oh, let's go to the SSO peer. Where is, where is, I cannot say your name. Uh, Setan. Was it Setan? Mm, it was the question, let me check, from Alexei. Is Alex, it possible to embed Looker widgets inside the... Yeah, let's the go place. to Alex see then. Yes. The, yeah. Okay. That. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we have, we have two winners who will write to you or please write to us on highcloudfresh.com uh, so uh, you'll get some branded gifts from, from Cloudfresh shortly in the coming weeks. And as for now, uh, I think we're good here. I'd like to thank everyone one more time for joining us and especially huge thanks to Charles who supported us on this webinar and to Max for sharing the insights on the query. Thank you so much. See you on our next events. Thank you all guys. Yeah. Have a nice day. Bye bye.